Okay, so this video from the original poster said that this 12-year-old boy tore his mom's house up because she took away his phone. Watch here. I don't care. Take the baby bag. <laughs> Job. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Shalom. Call Lima Yahweh. Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rakhakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahushai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that is scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. More signs of the times. So when you evaluate why we were taught to be lawless, the first answer is that the elites understand that the law was made for the Israelites to be the head, to take charge and rule over the nations with. The law in this Bible is what made the Israelites a special people above all nations. So our strength is in the law, which is this word. Now with that being said, when that is taken away, then that paves the way for utter lawlessness, disorder. There's no man around when you're looking at this video here. And that is all by design. When you look at the Amish community, you don't see police patrols walking through there or driving through there. You don't see arrests being made. The Amish community is what you would call today as self-contained. The elders come together to conjure up a decision for judgment. The youth or the young, the young men are used as a police force to help apprehend or detain someone that's unruly. So the citizens 
are running the communities in the Amish community. So the Most High created the Israelites to one, be self-contained, self-governing, and two, to be able to take that standard and rule over the other nations with his word. <clears throat> so this sense of lawlessness creates what? It creates the need for big government. It creates the need for social services, law enforcement, child protective services. So there is a multi-billion dollar payroll when immorality is pushed, when an environment of rebellion is fostered in the households. So this is all by design. Big government, little say so in the family homes by the head, which is the man. Total chaos and confusion. Let's go here first. So this is a part of the curses for going off. God will remove leaders. So that's the what? The elders, the men, essentially, the head of the household, pastors, prophets, captains. Isaiah 3, verse 1. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. So we're reading about infrastructure. We're reading about a solid foundation. Governance. Verse 2. The mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient. So without a government in place and a military to protect the infrastructure and to protect the leadership, then the nation falls as a whole. So we become a bunch of Indians with no chief, scattered. Isaiah 3, verse 3, the captain of 50 and the honorable men and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. Leaders. Isaiah 3, verse 4. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. So we are a broken nation, a nation that is in total disarray, destroyed, which means deconstructed. The babes that are ruling over us starts with Esau Edom. Matter of fact, we'll prove that. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Let's jump down to verse 16, if I'm not mistaken. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 15. The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child and thy princes eat in the morning. So our king is a child. As is the ruler, so are the people. So our children follow the way of this man that's not really qualified to rule. Esau Edom is the king of Babylon. 
He is the ruler of the land. So the people take on the characteristics and personality traits of the ruler. That's why he's having a temper tantrum. Now, when you look at this on a national level, wars are being waged on other nations. When the United States does not get its way, it does what? Drop bombs on sovereign nations. See? Look at this household. It looks like war was waged on its parents. Okay, so this video from the... The Bible says, as is the ruler, so are the people. Ecclesiastes 10, verse 16. Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child, and thy princes eat in the morning. Eat in the morning, not patient. Everything's got to be instantaneous. Fast food, instant coffee. No patience. In the ancient world, the, the servants would start working on the meal in the morning where they would kill the animal. A fresh kill. There was no refrigerator. Are you kidding? So that animal would be sacrificed early in the day. Stripped, cleaned to be served for dinner that evening of that same day. We'll hear again, Isaiah 3, verse 4. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, against the elders. So there is no family structure. So by default, the government fills in the void, fills in the vacuum, because the head is cut off. And when the head is cut off, the body and the tail follows suit, and dies in place. So when you read that scripture, Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So the knowledge is rooted in these small statutes and commandments, which is what? Order. So we forsook order and embrace this order, chaos. What is the global elite motto? Order out of chaos. Order out cow. Order out cow. Very difficult to say in Latin. So this is the end result. Oh, here, the Deuteronomy 21. But the Lord is establishing rulers and judges again. That's why he says, and I will set them in order before thine eyes. What order? It's right here. Isaiah 3, verse 2. The mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of 50, and the honorable men, and the counselor, and the cunning artificer, and the eloquent orator, judges, politicians, governors, rulers. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 21, verse 18. So we have the instruction book on how to govern 
a household and how to rule over a society and ultimately how to rule over the world. The Bible is the answer key. Deuteronomy 21 verse 18. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place. So this is the fail-safe system that's put in place. This is what it means to be self-contained. We don't need to spend billions of dollars in tax, in tax revenue or hard-earned money going to taxes when we govern ourselves. So when we follow this book, we don't need police officers, lawyers, judges, courts. The magistrate, so to speak, becomes the citizens. Deuteronomy 21, verse 20. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, this our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men and all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shall thou put evil away from among you. And all Israel shall hear and fear. So without this rule book, without these instructions, then we have to rely on external forces. There's a reason we were taken down by the other nations. Because we became disorderly, rebellious. So the Lord said, Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. So the enemies took the place of what we should have been doing in the first place, governing and judging righteously. See, let's go here. So the other nations are over us as a punishment to make us a reproach, embarrassed, ridiculed, mocked. Proverbs 31, verse 8. Open thy mouth for the dumb and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Do things righteously. Open thy mouth. Proverbs 31, verse 9. Open thy mouth. Judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and needy. So for failing to do so, the Lord put over us people that are just straight lawless as a punishment, a base man over us. So now we're under an unrighteous system because we behave unrighteously. A nation of fierce countenance is ruling over us unto this day. Which brings us here. Difficult times will come. Second Timothy 3 verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, 
covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. And those parents are literal parents and also the prophets, the elders, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So because we forsook the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, now we are serving under a heathen, which by the fault were under their gods. And they have a lower standard. So now we're subject to payments under a reprobate system full of injustice. That's why the Bible says, therefore, the law is slack. Wow, we got to get that one. This is our punishment. I think it's um, Habakkuk 1. Yeah, Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 3. Why dost thou show me, why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance for spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Disorder. Habakkuk 1, verse 4. Therefore, the law is slack, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Now we're under our enemies. See, Habakkuk 1, verse 5. Behold, ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvels. Behold, ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. So in the same lands where we were scattered and subjugated under our enemies, dispersed, we're being set back in order right before our eyes and the eyes of those that hate us. It's two ways. Let's go to... Um, 1 Timothy 1, verse 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers or whoremongers for them that defile themselves with mankind, for man-stealers, liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. The law is made for the disobedient. Judgment. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakwa Kadash, Rakatham. See you on the next lesson 
Lord willing. Kwame Yasharela in the pod babao. We got next, Lord willing. Okay, so this Shalom. video from the original.